How's it going, Eliminators? Today we're finishing up the Bombardier two-stroke ATV that we were working on previously, so let's get right into it. So picking up where we left off, we have the carburetor hooked up now, and I just gotta pull all that tape off. I'm gonna get the throttle cable hooked back up, and I will hook the fuel tank back up as well. I want to take the compressor and blow out the fuel line because you guys have to remember that there was a dead mouse inside of that tank. I have since cleaned off that tank. I'm gonna open up the fuel valve and I'm gonna to go to one end or the other end and uh, just blow it out with the compressor to make sure that uh, there's no debris inside of there. So I got the fuel valve turned on to reserve. You can see a whole bunch of stuff coming out of there. And then we're gonna go and turn this thing to on because there's two lines just get all the stuff out of there. We can go ahead and turn that off now. So we got a little bit of fuel that kind of sprayed onto the exhaust, but shouldn't be that big of a deal. This stuff absolutely reeks though, guys, because that mouse was sitting in the fuel tank. Oh, this stuff stinks. I'm gonna have to open a window. Okay, so I've got the tape pulled off of my carburetor, and the first thing we're going to do is get the back of the carburetor here into that rubber boot. And you wanna line up this little fin right here with that little kind of groove on the boot right there. And then you can go ahead and tighten up your strap that's right down there. So to get that, like I said, you're gonna come in from right around here somewhere, and then you should be able to tighten that up. Okay, and coming in from the top side here, just make sure that you're lined up and locked in place, and that'll just ensure that your carburetor won't spin left or right. And then you can go ahead and tighten up that tie strap. Now, whenever you're mounting a carburetor to the engine side boot, you always wanna give it a little tug to make sure that's tight. Because again, like I've said in previous videos, if we get a little bit of air before the carburetor, like let's say there was a crack in this boot, it wouldn't be that big of a deal. Sure, you might get a little bit of dirt in there, but your air fuel mixture isn't going to be changed. Whereas an air leak after the carburetor will significantly lean out your mixture because you'll be getting more air and your carburetor won't be able to adjust that by putting more fuel in. Now that we have that tightened up, you can go ahead and take your oil line and plug that up. Now, if you're not gonna be using your oil reservoir, then what you can do is go ahead and cap that with a piece of rubber and a clamp because you don't want any dirt going inside of there. Just remember that if you're doing that, you're gonna to have to pre-mix your fuel into your fuel tank. So we now have our fuel line hooked up, we have our oil line hooked up, and then when you put this boot on, you just wanna press it on until you hear it snap, and then go ahead and get your little clamp on there. Now, I still have to hook up my throttle cable here back up to the actual throttle. Now, I disconnected that. You might not have to, but I did because Again, I was having problems getting the one screw out of here, so I just thought, well, it would be easier to take it off of the throttle up top, and uh, it was pretty simple. I just had to undo a couple little screws here on the throttle, and then you go ahead and you just pull out the line. So that's pretty simple, and I can get all of that done after I get the fuel tank back on. So that'll be my next step. So we have two fuel lines here, and you guys can see that I got a little bit of blue electrical tape on one. That's to mark my fuel line for the run or on position. And then the other one is the reserve because we have to remember that on this tank here, we have an on, so that's your petcock or fuel valve on position. And then this will be the reserve position. So you don't wanna mix those two up. Now the simplest way to test for which one is which, if you didn't mark your fuel lines like I did, and let's say they got all mixed up, Go ahead and take your compressor and turn your fuel valve on and then blow into the line with your compressor and whichever line has air coming through, that will be your on. And then uh, you can go ahead and just double check, go to the other line, then you know exactly which line goes where on the tank. So I'm gonna go ahead, hook the fuel lines up to this tank, get the tank back in there, and then take the uh, two little 10 millimeter bolts and put them in. Now to get the 10 millimeter bolt into the back, it's fairly simple because we have the uh, seat and the shroud taken off, but you gotta come way down here and you can see the hole right there. So the air box breather tube is in the way, you can just bend that out of the way. And what I'm gonna be using is just a 10 millimeter ratchet with two extensions on it so I can kinda fish it in there and tighten that up. Now I've ran my throttle cable up through this little loop here and I've ran it through in between the frame. There's a little section that you can run it through. You just wanna make sure that nothing's pinched and you wanna make sure that it goes through this loop because once the bars are up, that kind of holds everything into position. So just kind of give it 
a little wiggle and make sure that it's nice and loose. So I'm gonna get the handlebars bolted up first and then I'll go ahead and hook up my throttle cable and that'll kind of line me up. Okay, so I got my throttle cable here and you're just gonna pop it in there and run the line through the little notch here and then run it sideways and then get your rubber grommet that's right here and just line it up to there. So it should look a little something like this. And then I'm just gonna hold this with my thumb. Go ahead and give your throttle cable a couple pushes. Make sure there's no binding and you should be ready to put your cap back on. Okay, now one thing that I would recommend is go ahead, once you have your cap on, push your throttle cable and then give your handlebars a turn both ways. When you push this in, if you turn it and you feel your thumb getting pressed out, then that means your throttle cable is getting pinched. So you wanna make sure that you wrote it to a spot where it's kind of loose in there so that it doesn't get pinched up because you could run into a problem where every time you turn left, your machine accelerates, which is not good, especially if a kid's gonna be riding this. So I'm gonna move on to putting the front little plastic piece on there with two little Phillips screws and those little screws go right into there. So that kind of just snaps into place, set that down, screw it in from up underneath. And the reason why you want to get this black plastic piece installed before you bolt up any of your red plastics is just so you can lift that up and get a stubby Phillips screwdriver in there. So now we can go ahead and bolt up our red plastic fairing. Okay, so I got the rear plastics on. Now there's quite a few bolts to this. However, on this one, you guys can see these two, they were broke. That wasn't my doing. And there's two bolts underneath here and two bolts underneath here as well. They were broken. Again, not my doing. So this only has four bolts holding it on. There's one here on this side and same thing on the other side. And then if you come up underneath here, there's one right there and then same thing on the other side. Now that the seat is in, I just figured I'd show you guys. The seat release is right back here on this model. So you just pull that Give that a pull and then you should be able to pop your seat right up. Okay, so that's pretty much it for all of the plastics. I got everything bolted up now and I got my little torque screws down in here. And then I just took a couple red zip ties. I just took three and that holds everything in nicely. So I'll mix up some fuel and I'll try to fire this thing up. Okay, so I'm going to be mixing up one liter of 50 to one fuel mix. So I have just about uh, half a liter there and I have 20 milliliters of two stroke mix oil here. So I'm going to dump that in and then I'm going to fill it up the rest of the way with fuel to the one liter mark, which is right at the top there. And then that will give me a mix of 50 to one, which is what my customer told me to mix at. I'm also going to be using my no spill gas can. You just press the button. Fuel comes out because it's got a nice little valve here that you push your thumb on. And then I can just kind of mix the rest of the two stroke oil out of there. And then I'll fill this back up to the one liter mark. And then I will know that I have exactly 50 to one. There we go. And that's 50 to 1. And I just ran some uh, Castrol two-stroke. This is a uh, premix, and uh, it's supposed to be smokeless. Sorry for the fan noise, but it's always good to have a window open and a little bit of ventilation when you're pouring fuel. So this thing's pretty much ready to fire up now. So let's see if we can get this thing fired up. Key switch on, pull your front brake. Beauty. Fires up right away, but the idle's too high, so I'm gonna take this thing outside and we're gonna turn that idle down a little bit. I love it when they fire up right away. So we're just gonna go to where our idle screw is right there and we're just gonna unscrew it just a little bit to bring that idle down slightly. There we go. She's idling nice, runs beauty. That's it, this thing's ready to return back to my customer. So now that we have this little quad running good, Let's take her out for a spin, see how it handles under a load. Well, 
guys, that thing is an absolute rocket. I mean, it's a 90cc two-stroke, and two-strokes always make generally more power for half the size of an engine when compared to a four-stroke. So, I mean, I've always had a special place in my heart for two-strokes. I love them, except for chainsaws and weed eaters. I hate working on them. But when it comes to dirt bikes or ATVs, I absolutely love them. Now, you have to remember that I'm 6'3", weigh about 220 pounds, and that thing was pulling even with me on it. But at the end of the day, it's a customer's machine, so I can't be too hard on it. So that's it for today's video. This thing runs awesome, and I'm sure my customer is going to be really pleased to get this thing back. Before I finish up, I just wanted to get a couple before and after shots so we can get a nice comparison. This is what the carburetor looked like before the cleaning, and this is what the carburetor looked like after the cleaning. You could tell there's quite a difference. Here's a before and after of the floats. The beige one there, that's the one that had a crack in it. And the black one is the one that we swapped in from a Polaris. Also, check out the fuel that I drained out from the fuel tank. The fuel on the left is what came out of the tank originally. You can tell that my customer mixed this thing way too rich. Then the fuel on the right is our mixture of 50 to 1 that we mixed up earlier. And it had this thing running awesome. Anyways, that wraps up our carb rebuild on this Bombardier DS90 two-stroke ATV. This this was a three-part series, four if you include the float swap video that I did beforehand. If you guys missed any of those parts and would like to get caught up on that, I'll have links in the description down below. If you guys enjoyed the video, think about leaving me a thumbs up. You know, it really helps me out. We just passed 3,000 subscribers, so I wanted to thank all the Eliminators out there for watching my videos and making this possible. If you guys would like to subscribe, you can click here to subscribe and click over here for one of my previous videos. I upload every single week, so be sure to come on back next week. Check the channel out for new content. And as always, guys, thanks for watching.